Welcome to Architect Tips, presented by ClearMeasure, a software architecture company empowering .NET development teams to be self-sufficient, able to move fast, deliver quality, and run their software systems with confidence. Make sure to subscribe on YouTube or your video podcast feed. If you have a question for the show, send them to architecttips at clear-measure.com. And the next tip could be yours. Welcome to another Architect Tip. I am Jeffrey Palermo, your host, and we're gonna be talking a little bit about a tip specific to the new Blazor framework uh, for .NET Core. And, uh, and we're gonna, we're gonna dive into it. We actually talked to Steve Sanderson, the original inventor of the first version of Blazor on the Azure DevOps podcast recently, so you might be interested in checking that out. And so what we're gonna do here is talk about how to track your circuits and how to know how many people are using your application, your distribution. This one is gonna be specific to, uh, tip specific to the server side because your client running in JavaScript is the same and it's gonna be running in a browser and then the Razor components are gonna stream over WebSockets the changes to your screen. And so as you look at your, your development tools in your browser, you're gonna see a bunch of binary messages going across. Those are the actual changes to your screen and that's the communication. Now, if you're running in Azure and you are running with multiple instances and you have some custom auto scaling rules, uh, which you're gonna to wanna to do and you're gonna to wanna to, uh, custom auto scale, then you're gonna have the question, how many of the users are tied or how many of the connected circuits are tied to each of the web servers because you're gonna be using sticky sessions. That's the ARR affinity as Azure calls it. And uh, so once a user gets assigned by the load balancer to a particular web server instance in your app service plan, it's gonna stay there for the life of the session, which is the circuit. So you're gonna to wanna to know, okay, how many, what's my distribution? Do I have one that's, that's overloaded? Uh, and if you've scaled up, that doesn't necessarily, and actually it doesn't, cause the user sessions to be more evenly distributed. Once a user is assigned to an instance, it's there. So you can scale up after the fact, but that's only going to affect new users that come in after you've scaled up. If the original instances are already overloaded, they're gonna remain overloaded in, unless you do something to specifically force those, uh, force the closure of those circuits, and then you can have the, the auto retry logic. So what you're gonna want is you're gonna want a graph in your dashboard and application insights that looks a little bit like this and um, on the top right you can see average open circuits and then bottom left you can see the average connected circuits and on the bottom right is how many circuits have disconnected over time and then it's often also good to track the memory of each of the instances of your application we can see that on the top left in this example and you do not get this out of the box so you're going to need to uh, emit some custom metrics to Application Insights, and I'm gonna show you how to do that with Blazor server side. And uh, as I go over to uh, Visual Studio, just to show you that, there is a class in Blazor called Circuit Handler, and you can find it in Microsoft.ASP.NET-Core.Components.Server.Circuits.CircuitHandler. Um, in .NET 5, that's going to be really easy to find and refactored uh, with .NET 3.1.8. You're going to actually find that in the components.server uh, web assembly um, NuGet package. So you're going to have to actually grab the web assembly NuGet package in order to get something specific to um, Blazor server side, but that's where it is. And this is a, you're gonna inherit your own class from this, register it in your services collection, and you can do with it whatever you want because you're gonna get events um, for circuit up and down. So just look at what we've done here. We've created the names of the different events and we've created a dictionary for open circuits and then a, a timer so that we don't, we don't uh, emit this metric every single time it fires. Um, and then the events that you get are uh, circuit opened and circuit closed. And, and so just look at that. With circuit open, boom, it's gonna be called for us by the framework. And so in our dictionary, we just say, hey, this, this circuit is open. Using a dictionary, we make sure that we don't uh, have duplicates. Whereas uh, we found in real practice that these events 
um, get called and fired not completely synchronous. So you'll want to use some type of hashing, mapping, or dictionary uh, deduplication, uh, but just using a dictionary works just fine. So open circuits, that's our logic there. I mean, you could use a simple int counter, whatever logic you want. You get the opportunity to do something when the circuit opens and when the circuit closes. And, um, and you also get events that are correlated on connection up and on connection down, okay? Um, and so we, we do the same thing with the dictionary um, on those things. So that is your tip, that's your architect tip for um, Blazor server-side connection tracking. It's gonna be really important um, as you get your applications into production to know how many open circuits you have per web instance and what your traffic is overall. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this architect tip and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching Architect Tips. If you would like help improving your team's speed, quality, or software stability, send us a note to architecttips at clear-measure.com. On behalf of everyone at Clear Measure, thanks for watching and may God bless you.